Hi, and welcome back to my Excel online. Today, we are going to show you how to export a PDF from Microsoft Excel and also how to import a PDF into Microsoft Excel so that you can use the data that was given to you on a PDF. This is actually one of our most popular videos on our website at myexcelonline.com. So feel free to visit there and get some more information on becoming a Power Excel user. As is often the case with Excel, there is more than one way to export a PDF. Today, I would like to to show you at least four different ways to export one and two different ways to import a PDF into Excel. So let's start with the four ways to export a PDF from Excel to a PDF file. This is the dashboard that we created last week. So let's just export this dashboard the easiest way. So let's just export this dashboard using the method of export under the file menu. So if I go up here to file, and I go down to export, I can now create a PDF right here. I'm going to be prompted where I would like to save this file. I'm going to scroll up and I just created a folder called PDF samples and I'm going to call this one data dashboard and hit publish at the bottom. Once I do that, you can see that Adobe Acrobat has been launched. But if I look at my PDF, I can see that there is a ton of information on here that doesn't really fit well to one page. So if I close out of here, if I wanted to keep all of my dashboard to just a one page PDF, I have some options. The first thing I can do is go up to page layout, select orientation and select landscape. The second thing I can do is click at the beginning of what I want printed on my PDF and drag all the way over to the right and go up to page layout, print area, set print area, and I can also go to page layout, hit the expand button, adjust the fit to one page wide by one page tall, and hit OK. Then when I go to file, export, and create my PDF, in this case I'm going to go back to the file and I'm going to change this to data dashboard 2 and hit publish. When that file is brought up, I can see that all of the information has been shrunk down to one page, making it a much quicker read for the user. Now I can exit out of there. The second way I can save a PDF is by going up to File and hitting Save As. Let me show you a sample of that. For example, I could highlight my pivot table and go back to Page Layout and set my print area there. And then I can go to File, and this time I can select Save As. Hit the Browse button and navigate back to the folder where I want to save it. And under here where it says Save As Type, I can scroll all the way down and go to PDF. In this case, I'm going to want to save this as Data Dashboard 3 and hit Save. Upon doing that, I can see that only the pivot table was exported to a PDF. If I want to share this spreadsheet as an attachment in an email, I could go over to File and go to Share, and I have some options here. First, I could share it to my OneDrive, or I could attach it as an Excel workbook, or I could attach the attachment as a PDF. So I'm going to select PDF, and once I do that, it'll take a few minutes for the PDF to be created. It may take a few minutes to generate the PDF from Excel, but once you do, and if you have Outlook enabled, Outlook will bring up a window that automatically includes the attachment of a PDF for this file right here inside the body of your email. And you can go ahead and type in the body of the email and customize it to the person that you're sending it to. So that was option number three. If you think you will be exporting as a PDF often, then it would be a good idea to add that functionality to the Quick Access Toolbar up here. In order to do that, click the down arrow and go to More Commands. Once on this window, you can select this down arrow and go to All Commands. And we're going to scroll down to the P's to get Publish as PDF. If you don't want to scroll on the scroll bar over here, you could select one of the items in this list and hit PU really quickly and you will go down to where it says publish but I want the one that's right under it that says publish as PDF or XPS and I'm going to hit add. Once I hit OK I will see this new button up here and this button will quickly allow me to export the current page as a PDF. So right here I'm going to click on my data set and I'm going to click on that button and it's going to ask me where I'd like to save this file. I'm going to go back to my folder that I created and instead of saying data dashboard, I'm just going to call it data.pdf and hit enter. And this may take a few minutes for it to publish to a PDF. So once that's complete, you can go to File Manager, and you can see that the file has been exported right here. If you are liking this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to get notifications of our new weekly Excel tips.
Now that we've covered four ways to export data from Excel to a PDF, let's go over two ways to import a PDF into Excel. So do you remember that one of those dashboards that we exported was just the pivot table from our dashboard? Well, let's try to import that pivot table back into Excel from the PDF format. So to do that, I already opened up a new spreadsheet. I'm going to go to data, get data from file, and I'm going to choose from PDF. Now in this case, I'm going to pick data dashboard board three because that was the file I had saved the pivot table as and I'm going to click import and on this screen I'm going to be asked what I want to import and I'm going to select the table right here even though it says table 001 that is the pivot table in that PDF that I have previously exported and then I'm just going to select that and hit load now you can see I've brought my pivot table back into Excel because this was saved as a PDF let me show you a second way of importing a PDF if I go back to my original PDF right here, in this case, it's data dashboard three. I can see the original pivot table that was exported to this PDF. If I just want to highlight this and hit control C on the keyboard to copy and then hit alt tab to go back to Excel. If I go into this new worksheet under here, if I just go to home, paste special and go to use text import wizard, I can see that my data is coming in as date, number of defects, date, number of defects. It is not spread out into columns. That's okay because we're going to play with that in a few minutes. I'm just going to hit next, next, and then finish. Now my data has come in, it's a little bit undesirable in its format. So there's a function I can use to straighten all this out. I'm going to use a formula called offset. The first argument I'm being asked for is the reference. And in this case, where do I want to start? I really want to start right here in cell A3 where my first date is. So I'm going to click on that cell. I want to lock this cell because I always want this to be the first cell that I'm looking at as my reference. So I'm going to put a dollar sign before the A and dollar sign before the three so that I am always starting at cell A3 no matter where I drag this formula. My next argument is what is my number of rows? Now this is going to get a little complicated because I'm going to have to use the column function and the row function inside of this to calculate my number of rows. So I'm going to hit a comma and for rows I'm actually going to use the word columns first and now I'm being asked for an array. So in this case, I want my array to be A3 all the way to A3. But in this first case here, I would like to lock down the A with a dollar sign because I'm going to be copying and dragging this formula over into the next column because not only do I want to return the dates in column D, but I also want to return that number of defects, do you see that in cell four, in column E. So this is the beginning of my second argument right here. And then I'm going to need to close these parentheses and subtract one from this columns argument. Next, I'm going to add together the number of rows. And this is going to be very similar. So I type the word rows with a left parenthesis. And for the row array argument, I'm going to put a three colon three because I only want to start with the third row. And in this case, I want to put a dollar sign before the three so that that row gets locked. And I'm going to close the parenthesis on that. I am going to go back in front of rows and put a left parenthesis because at the end of this argument right here where my rows function is and close that parenthesis and I'm going to subtract one from here close the parentheses and then I'm going to multiply by two because I want to return two columns this is the end of my rows argument and now my columns argument I only have one column of data so I'm only going to put a zero here as that final argument close the parentheses and hit enter See this number right here? If you've worked with Excel for a while, you will recognize this type of number as an unformatted date number. We will reformat that in a few minutes, but I just want to click and drag the formula first. So I'm going to select cell D3 and drag one to the right, and you will see this seven right here. And what the seven refers to is the number of defects for my first record. So now I'm going to select both D and E and I'm going to drag down to cell 24 and I will see that all of my data is being filled in. These last two cells I do not need, I can just delete those. So now if I highlight column D and I go up to home and I go over here to date, I will see that my data has been correctly transposed. I can type date up here if I would like and I can type defects up here if I would like. 
So there is some reformatting you have to do when you are importing a PDF in this manner, but it just might be a simple transposing of data. So there you have it. We have showed you four ways of how to export data from Excel to a PDF, and we've also shown you two ways on how to import data from an existing PDF. Hopefully you've learned something new today and look forward to seeing you again next time. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're really serious about advancing your Microsoft Excel skills so you can stand out from the crowd and get the jobs, promotions, and pay rises that you deserve, then click up here and join our Academy online course today.